Praise the Lord. Praise Thank God for this blessed day that he has given us to be in his presence, to worship him along with the angels and the archangels. The word of the Lord said in Psalm 125, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, but cannot be moved. As we come to the Lord and worship this morning, I invite you all, when you're within the sanctuary or at home, to bow your heads, to close your eyes, and prepare yourselves, your family, for the experience of worship. Joshua said, as for me and my family, we will serve the Most High God, the Lord. God is present with us, for we have gathered in His name. In his power, his love, we can experience today ever. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. Heavenly God, our loving Lord and Savior, we come before you, King of all creation, of all that is, that was, and that ever shall be. We come before you, Lord, trusting in your promises. Trusting in your word, trusting in your holy presence that so fills us this very moment. Dear God, we know that in you, no matter what may come, pandemic or not, we shall not be moved. Dear God, we pray that you would be with us in the midst of this worship experience. Help us, O Lord, to encounter you afresh to see your face. To recognize, O Lord, your voice. And to hear your words. Saying, child, walk this way. Child, listen. Dear God, we pray that we would worship you in spirit and in truth. And may our songs, our prayers, and our everything be acceptable in your sight. In the most awesome name, our Savior Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. For the glory of God, let us together give him praise by singing. Come, let us worship and bow down.
as we prepare for worship. Let's just come before the Lord in reflection. So let's just pause for a moment and look upon, reflect upon the very love of God. Oh, it is good and right to give him honor and praise. The angels and the archangels sing ceaselessly, sing holy right. So let's just take a moment as we enter into this time of praise. Remembering that this is not just what's taking place in the here and now on this earth, but we're joining in that heavenly chorus in worship and praise. And so, if the Spirit leads you, sing hallelujah, shout praise to God Almighty, for He is with us. He is holy. He is righteous. Just take a moment to give him praise. Oh. Praise God. Glory to the King of Kings. So the Lord, Lord, to the Prince of Peace, to the Rock of our salvation. Praise him. Oh. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, forever and ever. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your Let us come before him with 
thanksgiving extol him with music and with song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. O Lord God, lighten our eyes with the rings of your blissful and shining light. Cheer us this day with the joy of your resurrection from the dead. Become us joyful by your Lordship. O God, our Messiah, Jesus Christ, who's the hope of our life and Savior of our souls, strengthen us with the power of your grace. Amen. Better is one day. Together, give a praise.
Everyone may be seated. The lessons may not be.
Let us now move into a time of confession. Let's come to, to our Lord's presence with a sorrowful heart, a repentant heart, confessing all our sins. Please join me in this prayer of confession. Proverbs 28 verse 13 says, No one who conceals transgressions will prosper, but one who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. Our Christian life is a journey of repentance and renewal. General confession is acknowledging our unrighteousness before God and the need of forgiveness. Please respond to this prayer of confession by saying, Loving God, have mercy and forgive us. Loving God, have mercy and forgive us. God of all that is good, we confess that we have sinned against you and against one another. For the unrighteous things that we have done and for the virtuous things that we have failed to do. Amen. Amen. Have mercy. God of compassion, we confess that our lives fall far short of your glory. You have called us and set us apart to be a Christian-centered and compassionate community. However, we seldom embody these qualities in our individual and corporate lives because we fail to give priority to understanding your will through the study of your word and through active participation in the life and witness of the church. For these are sins. Loving God, have mercy and forgive us. Lord of mercy, we confess that too often we are selfish and proud, neglecting the needs of others. Although we believe that you have planted us as a church in this part of the world to continue your mission and to extend your loving kindness and mercy to those who are suffering, we have often disappointed you by our attitude of indifference and lack of concern. For these are sins. Loving God, have mercy and forgiveness. God of hope, we confess that we do not truly trust and obey you in all our life situations because we are often overwhelmed by self pity, fear, and worry. We realize that this is the result of our tendency to seek after worldly solutions to overcome our struggles as individuals and as a church. Thus, we have disregarded your command to abide in you and seek from you true peace and comfort. For these are sins. Loving God, have mercy and forgive us. God of our salvation, we confess that we have not been true partakers in your gift of redemption. You have blessed and equipped us with various gifts and abilities which enable us to spread your gospel message of redemption in Christ, our Lord. Instead of using these blessings for the extension of your kingdom and the glory of your name, we have misused them for our own purpose. In doing so, we have forsaken our commitment to share the good news of salvation to others. For these are sins. Loving God, have mercy and forgive us. Lord God, we are sorry for these are sins. Forgive us, cleanse us, transform us, and renew us by the power of your steadfast love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you'd like to kneel, sit down, or continue standing, please feel free to do so as we sing this song in confession. Refine us fire.
18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have so much to be thankful to our Lord, our good, good Father, for the gifts that he has given us in our life, for the gift of life, for being able to stand and praise him, to get up each morning, to be with our loved one, our friends and family, to do the things that he enables us to do. We are so grateful to God that he's continued to allow us to come together as a church family. And as I look around the sanctuary, I just praise him to see the children and the faces here. Some we haven't seen in quite some time. I must call Shaji Abraham to, that he's able to come here with his family to celebrate and worship. And, and all those that are here we haven't seen in a while, praise God for just enabling such wonderful things in our lives. Let us uh, just join together and sing this song loudly, how he is our good, good father.
congregation can have a seat in. Let's spend some time in intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer is the time where we pray on behalf of others. We cry out to God and we put our request before Him, interceding for others and also for ourselves. Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Let's take this time to think about all the families right now who are out there struggling. Lord, we know what COVID has done to us. We know how it's turned our lives upside down. We know so many have suffered whether it be loss of jobs, loss of finances, loss of mental peace of mind, and loss of lives, Lord. Lord we, we pray for all of those who are struggling, Lord, in so many different ways in this situation. Let us remember all of those who have lost loved ones, not just due to COVID, but to so many different reasons, Lord. Let us remember that there are many in our own church and in our community and people that we know who are struggling after these losses. Let us lift them up so that they may know your peace. Let us pray about the schools and places of work and all of these especially here in Burton County, who are struggling to figure out a plan to reopen after COVID and all the situations that are there. Because some are doing hybrid, some are doing full remote, some are doing full in person, and these things are changing constantly. And people in the towns are having unrest, unsure, what should we do with our children? What should we do with our jobs? So let there be peace. Let us pray for peace and guidance for all those who are making these decisions. And speaking of those who are making decisions, let us pray for leaders of our towns, of our counties, of our states, of our nations, and of the world. Especially as we're drawing near an election period here in the U.S. And there is so much unrest. There is so much division. So much hatred, so much anger, so much vitriol that is not Christ-like. But as we are Christians, as we are your servants, help us to show a peace, regardless of our political affiliations, a peace, a kindness, a compassion, and all the fruits of the Spirit. Let it be evident in us. And let these leaders that you have chosen that are here today and the leaders that will be chosen exhibit a godlike manner. Even if they don't know you, let, let them be guided to you somehow that they may make the right decisions. And let us remember not just the leaders of our political states, but also of our church. We think about the metropolitan the bishops, the clergy, the deacons, and all the various members of our church, and everyone who works in the background where we lift up the church. We specifically lift up Redeemer. As we are nearing our uh, another year uh, of existence and how we blessed us and how we've managed to, to grow in so many ways, keep us, uh, be with us. We especially lift up Jason Hutchin and his ministry and his family, and all of those who are working to ensure that this church is a light, is a beacon of hope and peace, that we may reach to the far ends of the earth. Let us truly be a mission for this church, that we're going out to the ends of the world. I pray for all those who could not attend service or who are at home attending service, as we all seek a new normal. Pray that you be with each of us as we all have our own individual needs. You know what they are, Lord. 
you know who's suffering, you know who's joyful, you know who has good news to share and who has bad news that they might be facing. Lord, we lift them up, Lord. We lift up all of these requests to you. We specifically pray, Lord, for all the healthcare workers and all of those who are behind the scenes in the hospitals doing uh, what they are called to do, what you have placed them to do. And especially as we fear, as the numbers seem to be going back up a little bit, we fear what the, the future has to hold. Um, so we ask that you be with them. Thank you, Lord, for their service. Thank you, Lord, for all the, the policemen, the firemen, and everyone who serves in, in some capacity. Lord, you have given us all gifts. Thank you that we have been able to use our gifts in some way to glorify you. And we ask that you just be with them more as they're, as they're trying to do their jobs and be safe while doing it. Lord God, as we lift up all these requests, I just pray that you be with us, that you enter us, that your Holy Spirit may work through us. Thank you, Lord, for always being our rock. Thank you, Lord, for always being our guide. Thank you, Lord, for being the one that gives us comfort in a world that is so full of uncomfort and distress and unrest. Lord, we lift up these prayers and supplications to you and ask that you be with us always. Let's have a gracious name pray. Amen. Let us proclaim our faith. I invite you to stand. And let us declare our faith in God by reciting together the Lord's, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one true God, God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the only Father of So that the world may believe 
Praise the Lord. What an awesome day. Yes, there's a lot that's going on around us. And some of the news reports that we hear are disappointing. And I know that there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of fear. We have no idea what tomorrow will bring. But the one thing that remains true is that God is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever. We may not be able to predict the future. In fact, we have no idea what even the next few hours holds for any of us. But, We can influence. We can affect the future. We can affect tomorrow by what we do today. And we can affect this evening by how we live this moment. In many ways, we may not be able to understand all that lies ahead. But when we place and firm to place our footing in the firm foundation that is Jesus Christ. Like it says in Psalm 125, when we trust the Lord, we are like Mount Zion and we shall not be moved. I'd like for us to open in our Bibles the gospel portion that was read, the gospel according to St. John chapter 17, verses 20 to 26. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 17, verses 20 to 26. I'll give you a moment to turn to it. I'll read from verse 21. I'll read a few verses. That they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Verse 23, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me. Verse 26, I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, 
But the love with which you have loved me be in them and I in them. That we may all be one. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly God and loving Lord and Savior, we come before you. Dear God, we know that in moments of uncertainty and fear, even in the midst of insecurity, you are right by our side. Would you declare that you shall never leave us orphan? Do not let your heart to be troubled. I will be with you. Come to me, Lord, as one word and then heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Your words are your promises. And Father God, we come before your holy scripture. Now speak to us. Enlighten our eyes, our minds, our hearts. To see, to know, to hear, to understand the truth of your message. And now may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, be accepted on thy sight. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Today, as a church throughout the world, we celebrate unity. Unity, not just with our sister churches, the CSI, the CNI, and those with which we share full communion with, but unity with the very body of Jesus Christ. Unity as a community of faithful. There's a story I read some time ago. I believe Corey Ten Boom, the evangelist, had shared it. It's about a small church that was meeting within a village in Africa. There was a lot of unrest. They were meeting in secret to worship and to pray. And during that time, there was much unrest outside. In fact, there were movements and groups that were seeking to destroy and kill the Christians and the Christian church. Well, the story not a story, but an actual event it goes like this. The church was gathered together in worship and in prayer. And bursting through the doors, two men came in with masks and armor and guns and ammo. And they waved the guns around. They disrupted the service and they said, Who, who among you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If you don't, this is your opportunity. Get out. Get out of this building. If any of you believe in Jesus Christ, stand up. If you don't, this is your opportunity. We'll only say it one more time. Leave, leave. At that very instant, several left. Left the church building, but some remained. And again, with their guns waving, they went around pointing it at individuals. If you believe in Jesus Christ, this is your final opportunity. Would you rather live or would you rather die? Get out of the building. This is your final opportunity. Again, several people left. And there were only a small number that remained within the church sanctuary. And finally, these two men, they closed the door to the church. They laid down their weapons and they took off their masks. And they said, we too are Christians. And we too are trying to find a faithful community of believers. And we wanted to make sure that if we joined this fellowship, that we would find true believers that were willing to risk their lives for Christ. What is unity? That's what this whole theme of today is on. We as a church have been focusing on the theme of holiness. The people of God are, are called to holiness. But what is unity? And where can we find it? 
We see Rome, honestly, that is seeking unity. On our dollar bill, on, on the great seal of the United States is written these words, e pluribus unum, in Latin, out of many one, out of many one, the United States. The United States, the, the country that is one nation. And we see people throughout the world yearning and seeking this, this unity, this elusive experience of oneness. But no matter where we look, in our nation, around the world, and even within our own families, unity often is not enough. Yet Jesus prays this prayer. This is the last prayer of Jesus. He says, I pray, Father, that they all be one, that my disciples, these that you have given me, and those who will later believe, those who will believe in the future, meaning us, I pray that they be one. How is this possible? How can we move from brokenness the restoration. How can we move from division to unity, to oneness? In the story, the event of that experience, we understand that they found community and unity with each other in worship, not because of the way they look, but because of who they look like. Christ. Church faith is not about getting together with people who look like us. It's about getting together and becoming more like Christ. To look like Jesus. Because that's all that really the church is meant to be. That's what Christ is saying. This prayer of Jesus is really a challenge to all. Because it, it shows the very heart of Christ of God. It says, you know what? They need to become one as we are one. Acts chapter 2, the Pentecost event, the disciples, the apostles, they came together. They were filled with the Spirit and people from different nations and different ethnicities began to hear in their own language the words of God. They began to understand a tremendous unity is what Christ demands of his people. And so we need to ask ourselves, as a family, as a church, how unified are we? In the eyes of God, not in the eyes of God. But how unified are we in the eyes of God? D.L. Moody, the famous evangelist, said there are only two ways that one can be or united. Only two ways to be united. One, we could either be frozen together or we could be melted together. And the difference is distinct. Sometimes we think just being together means you. It's more than that. It's about becoming, being with Christ and becoming what Christ intends us to be. When you look at this prayer, just these last few verses of this prayer, the prayer of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the one phrase that Jesus repeats over and over and over again is, Father, may they be one. May they be one. And then we continue. May they be one so that the world may believe. May they be one so that the world may know me. May they be one so that the world may see Jesus Christ. In other words, what Christ is teaching us is, is the church if the people of God, if we're not one, 
then the world cannot see Christ revealed to us. This is not about denominations. There is no special heaven for the Martha, for the Orthodox, for the Pentecost, for anything else, no. But for all who call upon the name of Christ. And so we're challenged today through the scripture. People of God are called to holiness. As a family, does the world know, see, or believe Christ through my family, or our family? As a church, does the world know, see, or believe Christ through us? Jesus says, may they all be one so that the world will see, know, and believe me. As Redeemer, does the world, and Jesus makes that distinction, that's what holiness is about, right? Set apart, separated. You and the world are not the same. Distinct. We're not supposed to look like the world, but we live the world. But what Jesus is saying is, you are one. We are one. Something happens, and the world takes notice. And they see Jesus. And they see Christ and they begin to believe. Holiness, as we learn from the prayer of Jesus Christ here, is unity in God. Holiness begins with unity in God. It means as a church we have no identity apart from the identity we have in Christ, our relationship with Christ. Jesus says in verse 21, may they be also in us. Verse 23, I in them. Verse 26, may who love me, they be in them and I in them. Jesus communicates this experience of the church, of the believing human community, of holiness as being in, as being one with, as entering into. And sometimes unity, oneness is so difficult because when we even think about any of our relationships, it's so hard because we want to move in different directions. Holiness is hindered in our lives often by us, saying, I know who God to them, but I want to do it my way. Yes, I know God's word, but I'm going to change it and make it look more like mine. Yes, I know obedience is what God expects, but let me take it in my direction. And it's not just in our relationship with God, it's in our relationship with anybody. That's where conflict begins. Yeah, I know what you're saying, but let me do it my way. Yeah, I know what you want, but I'm going to do what I want. And it's the same thing. We can't experience unity unless we're, that's why Jesus says, in me. There's, there's no division. There's no difference. There's no divided allegiance there when we're in Christ. Sometimes it's sin, sin that, that pulls us apart, that pushes us away from each other. Sometimes it's sin that leads us to isolation. We see that in Genesis 3 and 2. Genesis 2, Adam and Eve, they were before each other, they were were bare, they were naked, and they were unashamed. Sin enters into their life, and, and all of a sudden something has come in between them. Not just in between them. They're now hiding from God. Sin keeps us from holiness, from, from understanding the depth of unity, and it can push us away from each other. Can I say? Sometimes it's about 
Just self-centeredness. Church is about me. Myself and I. Faith is about me. It's all about the I. But whenever we look throughout Scripture, in the Old and in the New Testament, the church is very much associated with what? In the Old Testament, the people of God. The body of Christ. John chapter 1 says, He came to His own, but His own did not receive Him. To those who did receive Him, they gave Him the privilege to be called the children of God. Jesus says, pray in this way, our Father. So family, church is not a club or an organization, right? Jesus says the church is a people, our people. The church is the body. And no one finger has prominence over, or one member has prominence over the other. It's a body. The church is a family. That's what Jesus says. That's why when you pray, say, our Father, regardless of what we may look like, where we may be, He will lend me. Holiness is unity in God. And recognizing those things which pull us away from God, wanting to move in our own way as opposed to the Lord of God. Sin, self-centeredness, and everything else that that hinders us from our relationship with God can keep us in holiness, set apart from Him. And the last thing that when we look at this passage that I want to highlight is how holiness is a radical witness of God's love. Now we all think we know what love is. In the Bible, in Christ redefines what love is. And the love that we hear about, the love that we see in the world out there is not the love that Jesus is talking about or preaching or teaching or the love that we see in Scripture. No. So holiness and the church here, well, that's the other word that we see repeated often in, this, in just these few verses. Love. And Jesus says here, you have loved them even as you have loved me. You have loved them with a very same love. Jesus says, Father, you have loved me in the same way. You, in the same way, you have loved all of us. There is no difference. And that is the love of God, and it is distinct from the love that we see in the world. Why? Because Christ knows that within the church, as within every relationship, within his community, it's not perfect. There will be arguments. There will be disagreements. There will be conflict. You will be offended. We will be offended and hurt. And sometimes there's pain. But Jesus reminds us here that holiness Holiness is really radically witnessing the love of God. And what is it? It looks different when you're in the church, in the believing community, and when you're outside. This radical love that Jesus speaks of here is the love that shows forth forgiveness, mercy, and grace. It's a love that does not harbor bitterness. It's a love that does not harbor ill will. It's a love that does not harbor anger. It's a love that demands that I will love despite, that I will love despite what has been done or not. It's a love that doesn't have to wait for someone else to love me first in order to love them. And this is why Jesus said, let them love each other. Let them
than we want because this type of love is not what you see in the world out there. And Jesus says, anybody can love, in the Sermon on the Mount, anybody can love the people who love them. The sinners do that. But I'm telling you, love your enemies. I'm telling you, love them that don't love you. I'm telling you to be radical in your witness about love. In other words, there is no excuse for the believer to ever, whether it be in the family, whether it be in the church, or in the world, where it might be, to say, or act out of love. To say, I won't love, or to not act in love. Over the past month, we've been thinking about and going into the scripture regarding what it means to be the people of God. What it means to be called to holiness. And each week we've been looking at different facets and aspects of that. And today we conclude with the prayer of Jesus Christ and his prayers for you. And he says to us, we are his children, we are a family, we are his people, we are the body. And he says, be one. Remember there are things that are going to pull you apart. Sin will, will encourage. But remain in me. Remain in my word. And stay set apart, holy, and begun. Jesus says, You may get hurt. I've been hurt. It's crucified. The tree. But Jesus says, May your love be radical. They can show forgiveness. They can show grace. Give them an all, even what they don't deserve, because that's what Christ has done for us. And you can show mercy. And in that, we truly can look like the people of God, look like Christ. This is the holiness to which Christ is calling us. And Jesus makes it very clear here. In oneness with love, the world will take notice. And the world will believe on the name of Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads. Let's come before the Lord in prayer, in submission, in dedication. Over the past one month, we have been focusing on the theme of what it means to be the people of God. We've been considering what it means to be holy. And yet so often, knowingly or unknowingly, we fall far from what God intends of us. At this day, Christ is inviting us Will you, will we, live into the identity of the church, the body of Christ, and say, but I am called, called to holy living. Where God is holy, and his people are called to holy. Will our actions, will our witness reveal Christ in the world? Will we dedicate our lives in holiness? Can you want to be in this world? With your word, Father Jesus. Oh Lord, we thank you for your word, Father. We thank you for your pastor, for your priest, Father, who has spoken the truth, Father Jesus. Oh Lord, you have called us, oh Lord, to live in unity, in unity, Father Jesus. 
In a world, O oh Lord, that's striving to divide us, O oh Lord, by our color, by our, our, our economic status, Father, by, most of all, by our faith, Father Jesus. O oh Lord, you have called us to live in unity, Father Jesus, to live in oneness, Father, by the radical love that you've shown us, O oh Father, by the blood that was shed on the cross, Father Jesus. We believe in you, Father. We believe in your Son, we believe in the Holy Spirit, Father Jesus, and we move, O oh Lord, to live in your identity, Father Jesus. O oh Lord, as we leave this place today, Father, we thank you, Father, that you've filled us with your Spirit, Father, that you've called us, O oh Lord, to living, O oh Lord, that is reflective of your glory, Father, that you're filling our thoughts, our words, and our deeds, Father, to, do, to move mountains in your name, Father, the second wave of pandemic may come. We do not know who's going to be our president. We do not know what the political situation of this world is going to be. But we rest assured that our Father has us in his hands, Father Jesus. And we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you, Jesus. Oh Lord, we thank you for each person who's come here, Father. We thank you, Lord, for everyone behind the scenes who are working so hard, Father, for they are in their way, Lord, bearing witness for you, Father. We thank you for our members who are at home and participating in this worship, Father. We thank you, Jesus, that you are moving this world, Father, even though the church doors are closed, you are moving each one of us, oh Lord, to move towards you, Father. And we thank you, we praise you and glorify you. In your holy name we pray, Amen. Amen. This time, those who have celebrated your birthday or wedding anniversary, please come forward if you're in the sanctuary. If you're at home or watching from elsewhere, I invite you to stand. This is a time of thanksgiving. Our God is a great God. Let us pray. Heavenly God and loving Lord. God, your love is beyond comprehension. We praise you, dear God, for each one of us. Father, for you know that breath and our very breath of life flows from you. We thank you, O oh Lord, for these, your children, present here, and those who are standing wherever they might be. We thank you, dear God, for you have given them another year in their life. We pray, O oh Lord, that this year be full of new blessings, greater joy. Father, may they walk in you, may they learn from you, and may they lead a life that is truly a fragrant offering unto you. Father, you've been so faithful in years past. There have been ups, there have been downs, there have been difficulties. Father, but your love has sustained them. Continue to sustain, encourage, and empower them all. Father God, we especially submit those who are celebrating their wedding anniversary. Dear God, you are so good that you would gift us with relationship. And we thank you, Lord, for the family. Father, we pray that they would continue to grow together in joy, Father, in love and mutual understanding, and we begin or continue to grow in the abundance of life. Father, may they fulfill all your desires, your mission for their marriage and for their family. On such a day as this, you declare over them that you are no longer two, but one. So, Father, lead them in unity. And lead them to oneness with you and each other. And we pray, Lord, through them all generations, be blessed. We submit each and every one, Father, 
Let no work of the evil one come up against her and gain victory over them. But set your angels round about, guard them, from blessing to blessing, victory to blessing, victory. Lead your children. All. In the most awesome name of our Savior, Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. We're going to sing this next song. Let's give God praise as we sing, Lead Me to the Cross. Lead Me to the Cross.
Next Sunday, we'll be having our Sunday School Assembly at 10 a.m. The classes are conducted virtually. Uh, the schedule and details are available on the church children's ministry page or the church center app. Please contact the superintendent, Ms. Lysel George, for additional information. Our online Acts worship service will continue next Sunday at 11.45 a.m. If you'd like to join in person, as some folks have done today, please contact our uh, hospitality coordinator, Mrs. Susan Thomas, and it has to be confirmed either by herself or our secretary, Mr. Ben Jacob, or the car, um, Jason Thomas. And if you have any other questions, please reach out to us, either by group me or email info at redeemermtc.org. That's info at redeemermtc.org. Our life groups will be meeting this week. Our men's ministry will have our Bible study on Thursday at 9 p.m. Again, please look out at Ruby and the Church Center app for further information. The weekly youth meeting is at 6.30 on Friday. All the youth, please try to join. Our Saturday morning prayer call is at 8 a.m. It's exciting to celebrate a few birthdays uh, this week. Our members, Christopher Verghese and Bethany Abraham, Christian Verghese, David Lemon, Paul Verghese, Caleb Thomas, and Stephanie John. So let's give them all a round of applause. God bless you for the new year. Happy birthday. As a reminder, if you or anyone else at home could use support, help, or even prayer, uh, it's confidential. Please don't hesitate to contact us, especially our uh, Reverend Jason Thomas. All requests are confidential. God bless you and have a great week. Be with each one of us all.